Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We're delighted that you've joined us today and want to remind you that this program is sponsored by the University of North Texas Health Science Center, and it meets Monday through Friday from 1030 to 11. My email address is included on the slide you see on your screen should you need to contact me uh, regarding access or any other questions. I'd also like to remind you that this meeting is recorded so that it can be used in the future by families and communities to provide activities uh, for those living at home. And today we have with us Brooke Wood, who is an LVN Regional Memory Care Specialist with Civitas Senior Living. And we're going to do a craft with colored tissue paper. So if you brought supplies along, feel free to work along with Brooke, and if not, just enjoy the conversation and seeing what she's going to make today. Brooke, hand awesome. it off to you. Thank you, Gail. Yes, yeah, so today we're going to be doing um, a little tissue paper craft. I have an example of what we're doing. So I thought since it was Mother's Day, um, you know, a little heart, and I wrote down here, Happy Mother's Day. Um, so for this one, I uh, this is ex the example that I'm working off of, but I do have um, a blank part that I just printed off of the internet. So this is going to be my template, my guide um, to knowing where the tissue paper is supposed to go. Um, this is just one though shape that you can do. I also printed off a handful of other ones for different seasons, different festivities. Um, you know, around St. Patrick's Day, you could do a shamrock shape. Um, and I know 4th of July is coming up, and if you want kind of like a harder skill level, you could do like a flag shape. Um, so really, you know, whatever um, you are wanting to do or whatever seasonal things and whatever kind of color tissue paper you have as well. So today I have pink tissue paper, red tissue paper, and white tissue paper that I'm going to be using. I cut these up before we started and um, just about into one and a half inch squares. Um, they don't have to be precise, um, and you don't have to cut them either. You can tear them if that's easier. It was just easier for me to cut them so that I have enough um, things. Um, I'm going to put my camera down a little bit so that y'all can see my workspace, but really the only things I'm going to have are the paper. I had the scissors that I needed to cut up the tissue paper. I have a little dish for some glue. I just use um, Elmer's glue. Uh, I'm going to put some in here. I just put a little bit, and if you need to add more later, you can. And then what my little trick for doing this is I also use a pen. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take, you can just start off with a color of tissue paper. If you want to do one color for the whole thing, that's okay. Or if you want to do half on one side or half on the other, or kind of like my sample where it was just all together. But you could just start, and what I do is I take the pen, and I wrap the tissue paper around it. That's just so that my hands don't get dirty and glue doesn't get everywhere. Um, then you're just gonna dip um, into the paper and start placing. So um, it's really easy to do this and you don't have to use the pen. Like I said, I just use it so that um, my hands don't get dirty and that it wraps around um, the area. But you can also just take this put it into a little ball, and then dip as well. I also sometimes think by using the pin, it makes it to where it gets just the right amount of glue on there. Not too much, not too little, but it's not oversaturated um, with glue. And so- Tilt your camera just a little bit ooh. more so we can see your paper. There you go. That's there good. There we go. Good, yeah. So, um, this whole heart, the one that was already completed, took me probably about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Um, and you can really do this at any skill level. So, um, you know, if you're wanting something that's a little bit easier, it might not be wrapping it around or even crumpling it up. You can almost do it like a stained glass and just glue, put a little bit of glue and then put it down in the heart and then just layer to where it almost looks like a stained glass. And actually, if you do that and you um, do put it up against the window, the sun still shines through it really nicely and you're able to get kind of that same stained glass effect. 
You can also do these on greeting cards. Um, if you have any just blank greeting cards and you're wanting to add a little bit of personal touch to them, you can um, add these to greeting cards as well. And then really just work with any tissue paper that you have. This is all tissue paper that I already had at home um, and kind of helps inspire me to do this heart, especially since Mother's Day is coming up. But I've seen people do scenery before, um, free-handed without the stencil area. Um, and you can, you know, use green for your um, grass and then some brown for like a tree trunk and really just get creative with it. Okay. I also saw whenever I was looking up different um, templates um, for this heart, I saw this one really cool one that would have been more of a, um, a harder one to do. So if you're wanting more of a challenge, I saw one where um, they bought one of those styrofoam hearts from Hobby Lobby and they got tissue paper and they made a little wreath. They did theirs by using hot glue instead of um, just the Elmer's glue that I have. Um, and the Elmer's glue works perfect for the paper if you're just doing it on a paper backing. But if you are wanting something to um, you know, be a door hanger or something similar, um, I would probably use something like hot glue, but that, that's kind of for a more challenging. And the great thing about this activity is it doesn't have to be perfect. You can go outside of the lines, you can stay a little bit inside of the lines and it'll still look really good. And I think it looks nice whenever you have kind of that 3D effect as okay. well. I'm gonna add a little bit more white because I see I'm getting heavy on my, on my pinks and my reds. Well, that's cute, isn't it? We'll try to do that when we got some well, we got some uh, glue. We didn't yeah. Have any glue. Yeah, it really is. You know, I haven't ever tried it with like a glue stick, but I bet if you also had a glue stick and you um, just glued down on the inside and then you went behind and put all of your um, tissue paper, I bet that that would work really nicely as well. I love the pencil idea because it makes it all a little bit uniform. Yeah. In how the tissue paper goes on there. Yeah. And I love that you don't have to get your hands messy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. If I didn't have the pencil, I'd probably try to find a pair of gloves so that I wasn't peeling glue off my skin for the next day or so. Um, but yeah, the, the pencil or the pen or, you know, even if you had a bigger marker, but yeah, it makes it to where you can just wrap it around. And then almost what I love too about this heart one is I almost feel like the paper wrapping around looks like a little bit like flowers. So it's almost like flowers inside of a heart. And I just think it looks cute. Yeah, what size was the tissues uh, cut at? So I cut these in about one and a half to two inch squares. They're not the same size. Like this pink one is a whole lot bigger than this white one. Um, but at about one and a half to two inch squares, just so that they can be easily handled too. Uh, okay. So have you tried doing where you put one, let's say one of the bigger pink ones down and then put one of the smaller white ones in the middle of it? Yes. Yeah, so I did actually do that with, um, the sample one that I had. Um, and it does work if you um, put the pink one on top and then the white one. The only thing that I started thinking of is that um, if you do it like this where you layer them, 
that one white one doesn't have any glue in it and it probably won't come out but you might have a little bit of shedding later but but you could take the pen and dab a little bit of glue on the pink one before you lay the white one on top of it that's true that's true yeah and then you can have some layering effects going and that would look really pretty let's try that so i'm gonna do a red and then a white And I would normally probably do, that looks cute. It does look like layered and it looks like a little flower. Mm -hmm. I like that one. And like I said, for if you wanna do kind of a more challenging, just picture one too, this flag coming up for 4th of July, what I would do is I would, um, Obviously, the, the stars aren't going to look like stars, but I would probably just place one white one, you know, where, where the stars lie, and that's a good outline as well. And that one's just a little bit more challenging because it has more lines and stuff. This heart one is just, you know, one big shape that makes it nice. I was thinking whenever I was doing this about Mother's Day, and I was wondering if anybody has any like Mother's Day traditions that they like to do, whether it's like going out to brunch or just staying at home. We go to Schlitterbahn every year, the big ah. park in New Braunfels, but you know, unfortunately not this year. Not this year, yeah. Yeah, that's what we do. Well, we most often celebrate on the Saturday uh, because going to a restaurant on a Sunday for Mother's Day, it's usually too crowded. That's we true. We usually end up doing ours on Saturday unless we're cooking at home, which that's what we'll be doing this year. So, yeah. That's a good idea, going out on Saturday. Yeah. I don't have my, or I'm not, I'm not a mom, but my mom didn't really have any Mother's Day traditions. We just kind of stayed at home and relaxed. That's what she liked to do. She just liked to relax, <laughs> get, a, get a day of rest. <laughs> get somebody else yeah. to do all the cooking and that, and she could just rest. And I do yes, like yep. that. My dad would do all of the cooking and the kids would do the cleaning of at least the dishes. I don't know that we helped out with all of the extra cleaning that she does, but <laughs> we tried. We tried. Well, that's a, a, a beautiful Mother's Day gift right there. And you know what's a nice thing, too, is if you are wanting to... Um, you know, use it as decoration, even if it's not like in a wreath form, is you can even put a little um, black mat around it and make it look all nice and pretty. I am running out of glue. I'm gonna put a little you bit could, more. You could also um, cut it out and um, do something where you could hang it, like hang it from the windowsill mm -hmm. and let the light, see what it does when the light comes through it. Yeah. And that's what I was kind of mentioning too. If y'all ever go on the internet and look too, um, they have some stained glass where you do, it's, it's not real stained glass, but where mm -hmm. you just do it with the, with the, um, tissue paper. And since the tissue paper is so thin, the light really does shine through nicely. So if you get some like blues and some greens and some yellows, it would really be pretty, you know, as kind of a, a faux stained glass. I think I want some more red down here. And what I noticed is I use a lot more red and pink than I do the white, but you know, whatever, whatever works best for, for y'all. It doesn't have to, to be any sort of, it doesn't have any sort of uniformity. It just is kind of going where it's going. And it kind of loses the shape of a heart a little bit whenever I get into this, but 
What I did with this last one too is after it dried for a little bit, I took my hands around it and I kind of crunched it together into the shape of a heart more and it took on that heart shape a little bit more. I did wait until it had dried for probably about 10 minutes or so just so that none of those pieces fell off, but that helped to give it that heart shape back again. And the perfect thing about this is you don't have to be an artist to do it. Are you still there, Brooke? Looks like her video might have, have lost her. Um, I can show you. I can show you something that's similar to this. I don't know if you can see it. Yes. But you can also do. You know, you can draw a tree and have the flat paper so the tissue paper instead of having it 3d you can kind of you know put it on flat and glue and this is something that you can work on over a period of time so it's not so, just something yeah like an activity for like a one-on-one -on -one. this can be worked on with a group of people and they can you can have so so the color the colors on that is actually tissue paper it's all tissue paper well this is actual paper Right. This is but the color paper, on it is can, tissue paper. Mm -hmm, but you can use tissue paper too. Oh, but wow. um, the beauty of it is the you know the residents you know can just rip rip the paper. They don't have to cut. Right. They can just so you can have one person ripping it. You can have another person gluing it. Um, yeah. So it, it's a it's a it's a it's a great activity. You can have a bigger canvas, and it can be something that you can work on over six months even you know right. um and have it up on an easel in your house or your community and so you can see that it's a work in progress right yeah that's a cool idea too yeah i think we may have lost brick and i have to go i'm so sorry i have a I have a call at 11 so that's okay that's okay Thanks okay. so much for getting on with us, Jane. Absolutely. Let I'll me see you. Wait a few minutes and see if Brooke jumps back in. Gotcha. Okay, bye. So have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you. You too. So, Janet and Barbara, do you think that's an activity that y'all might uh, try out? Yeah, I think we might try that out. We just don't have any glue right now. Yeah. And uh, I wonder, so I, I wonder I wonder if you get if there's um, something you could substitute for glue. I'll have to let me do a quick check on that and see what can you substitute for glue. Well, I just don't know what happened. Oh, there you are. I thought that uh, something went wrong with the meeting, but something must have been wrong with my computer. I apologize about that. <laughs> so we're we're talking about if there's a substitute that we can use for glue if we don't have glue. So I'm doing a quick search. Oh. Paste. Um, so do you have flour and water, Janet? No, flour and water? Uh-huh. Huh. Our corns, um, let's see, you can do a paste of flour and water, or you can do a cornstarch paste. Ooh. Milk glue. Um, and I have used, um, I use a cornstarch paste when I make um, homemade egg rolls. Oh, okay. Like whenever you roll them, you use the cornstarch paste. So it's just cornstarch and just enough water to make, make it liquidy enough. Uh -huh. And then you um, put that on the edges of the egg roll. And then when you close it, it helps it stick. Ew. Well, that's good. So, so I'm going to show you what mine looks like right now. This is what 
So this is the one that we were just making together. It looks and great. It doesn't, it's not inside the lines all the way, but the way it kind of like hangs over, I think it's perfect. And then what I'm gonna do in just a second is, I'm going to, let me see if I can do it. I'm gonna like crunch it a little bit. So we're trying to take that heart shape where you get that like divot in the middle. And then, you know, whether you're just wanting to cut this out and use it and hang it like Gail said, or whether you're wanting to put a black mat around it and make it look nice, or whether you're just wanting to give it to, you know, one of your daughters now for Mother's Day, um, or even just have it for yourself. You can come down here and write something down here at the bottom too. So I'm just gonna write Happy Mother's Day. And then it becomes a nice little, nice little craft. But it does, it, it's just, it's unique. And some of it's like different heights. So some of them right here are taller and these ones are a little bit shorter, but I think it looks pretty cute. So here are the two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, good, I'm glad you liked it. You <laughs> made that heart cute? Yeah. He made a heart out of tissue paper. Well, I think we've hit almost about time too, Gail. I don't know if if we yes, have any questions. I always have, I always have extra tissue paper from from gifts, so it's easy to come up with that. And now that we've discovered we can use cornstarch and water paste for the glue. That's awesome, yeah. It's a pretty simple craft to do at home without having yeah. to get out to the store for supplies. Yeah, and I'll tell you, a little tissue paper goes a long way. I didn't know how much I was gonna need, and so I cut up a ton. And two pages of each color, like full. Um, and, and probably a half a page too of each much. color. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need that much, <laughs> so a little goes a long way. And that was for both of them. I cut up two pages and I used it in, in both, uh, you know, the sample heart that I showed y'all at the beginning and the one that I did at the end. So um, I'll have plenty left over for my next craft. <laughs> That's great. Well, real quick, I'm gonna share my screen with you again. So tomorrow we're actually going to do a painting activity. What's wrong? And Tasha Spencer will be our presenter. So I hope you'll both be able to join us tomorrow for that activity. Demetrius and we'll look friendly. forward to seeing you then. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye. We got to paint tomorrow. Okay. Well, I don't think we have any. Bye, Gail. Bye. So tomorrow when we do the painting activity, we might also talk about some creative ways um, to use things at home for paints. So we'll see what the presenter has in mind. So we'll look forward to having y'all with us tomorrow. You know, like, like dot, you know, like beet juice is red and blueberry right. juice is blue. <laughs> and, and so you could use, you, we can use fruits to paint. And also lots of times we have food coloring, even though we don't have paint. Yeah, but that's messy. If it gets on anything else, it's there forever. <laughs> Blueberries will do that too, won't they? <laughs> well, I hope y'all have enjoyed the activity today. And I hope that we'll see you tomorrow. Did you have any trouble getting on today? No. No, I, I had to run an errand, but I just put it on before, before I left. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we're glad Thank that y'all were with us today, and we hope to see you tomorrow. You know, I know something else you can do with those hearts. Instead of just that paper, instead of crepe paper, you can do buttons or macaroni. That's shapes true. Or very true. Yeah. But the lots, heart of, was really lots of ways to get creative with that. Yeah, it was really nice. 
it was well, you the white the one with all the heart stuff, the tissue paper. Oh. Say, say that again. Was all of the heart stuff, uh, all the, was it all tissue paper? Uh, except for the piece of paper that she glued it to. Okay. The piece of paper that she glued it to was a regular paper with the outline of a heart. Oh, okay. But, but then all the paper that she put on it with the glue and the pencil was all three colors of tissue paper, red, pink, and white. But you could use okay. any colors you wanted to. All right. That's cool. All right. Thank you, well, thank thank you. you all. Y'all have a great afternoon, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.